I'd like to call the 10th meeting of the 2013-14 Common Council to order. Could the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mayor. Um, being able to move forward in life is a true test of a person's maturity level and a true test of the confidence that they have within themselves. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mark? Anybody out? Anybody in? Okay. Twelve present. Um, Alderman Dassler, Donahue, Lassard are excused. Alderman Van Akron is not excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next item is the uh, approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes from the last council <coughs> meeting. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve ayes. There are no resignations or council appointments this evening, so we'll um, go on to the uh, public forum. Okay, this evening we have two speakers. First on the list would be Richard White. Would you please come on up to the front here? Right up to the podium here. And Richard, can you give me your home address, please? 1627 Indiana Avenue. Okay. And you will have five minutes, sir. What was that? You will have five minutes, so you may go ahead. Five minutes, okay. Okay. Okay, I'm Richard White, and I've been in Sheboygan for just about all my life. And I've got a sh shop on 17th in Indiana. I was in the rug cleaning, rug and furniture cleaning <coughs> business for since. Well, I've been there since uh, 2005. I mean, no. Well, anyway, 19, 1950, 59, I think, is the year that I built my shop and. Um, had the grand opening, see? So anyway, I've been in the rug cleaning business and furniture cleaning business, and then I branched out into the trucking business. I was on the road for about 16 years, trucking all over, hauling, hauling the good cheese from Wisconsin to all over. <laughs> and anyway, at, I ended that about uh, 19... Uh, 2004. So for the last 10 years, not quite nine years, I've been doing my other thing that was repairing cars. Because I was the trucking business, I repaired all my trucks and stuff, and so then I went into fixing cars. And so anyway, I, everybody comes to me, I don't have a sign up that I fix cars, but I do it at a reasonable rate, and everybody knows where to find me and comes over, and I take their take care of their body work or changing engines or rear ends or whatever, you know. But anyway, so this Reverend Reese came to me and wanted me to fix a Mercedes Benz, you know. Well, I said, I don't know much about a Mercedes Benz, but we can figure it out, so. Anyway, I put in, he wanted to, he brought all the parts there, so I, I, I first of all, we, my helper and I, we went cahoots and put in all new spark plugs and wires and 
coils and everything in in the overhead. You know, it's kind of different. It's kind of a different engine than the the usual one. See, so we did that, and then we. The, uh, you know, I was supposed to call him on Thursday to see if, because he only wanted to spend $150. I says, well, that's, uh, that ain't going to go very far because this year he brought me a 1996 Mercedes Benz and it was pretty well beat up. I mean, it's all beside that, you know, the fenders were beat up, the door was beat up, and there was no mirrors on it. and. It was kind of in bad shape, and he, I don't know, maybe he wanted miracles. So, so. anyway, we, my partner and I, we put in all new plugs and wires and coils and the overhead and stuff, and and we had a fender there. And so, I, he, he only wanted to spend 150 bucks. Well, I came to 100 dollars just over, putting the overhead on that engine in. So anyway. Uh, we uh, got that done. I called him and see if he wants something else done. And well, he didn't answer. I said, "Well, this thing needs a lot of work, so I better go and start fixing the rest of this car." So we started taking that old left front fender off. It was all bent, so we took that off and put a new painted it and then put it on. And then we fixed up that side of the car and. We did a bunch of other stuff, and I've got the bill here for. Anyway, we worked about three days on it, and the bill came to four hundred and forty-six dollars. You know, and, oh, he ain't gonna pay that. He says, "I told you, I want to spend one hundred and fifty dollars." Well, I said, "Well, he needs more than one hundred and fifty dollars worth of work." You know, so anyway, that was in um, the fourth month, which was January, from month, April. You know that. And he brought it, brought it there. So anyway, he didn't want to pay it, so he left. And so the car sat there from April till last week, Wednesday. And all of a sudden, my other body man was working in the shop, and I was up in front. And all of a sudden, I must have dozed off, took an evening, afternoon break, you know. And all of a sudden, I said, what happened to the Mercedes? Well, they I don't know. Nobody has seen it even go. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, the Mercedes Excuse me, left. Richard? So, so. Your five minutes are up. Would you like an extra one minute? Okay. So anyway, um, so anyway, I says, well, I went. I called the police department to, to see what they could do about it. Well, they said, well, they couldn't do nothing, you know. I says, well, what the heck, the police department, the guy stole his car right out of my yard, you know. He didn't pay the bill. He was four hundred and forty-four dollars. I don't know, he's, but he's a minister. He figures maybe he, he don't have to pay or something. So anyway, here I sit. I'm out four hundred and forty-four dollars worth of labor, and I just thought if there's something that the police or someone should be able to keep everybody in line and pay their bills, you know. So that's that's my story anyway. I, Thanks, Dick. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if you can do anything about it, but you know that's. I I call the police department and they wouldn't they wouldn't touch it. You know, so I don't know if there's something else that can be done. But I'd I hired a lawyer. It cost me more than that four hundred forty four dollars. That's the problem. Thank you. Your time is up. Okay. Thank you, Richard. <clears throat> All right, next on the list is Chad Starkey. Chad, if you could come up. <clears throat> Chad, can I get your home address, please? 1423 Michigan Avenue. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay. This is becoming a real nuisance now. <clears throat> right on the corner of 14th and Michigan, there was a very bad accident. Four cars got involved. Enough is enough. There's <coughs> kids that play over there. There's elderly people that try to cross the street. I don't think it's fair to the elderly or anybody else that we have to live in this dangerous condition. 
if you want to cross Michigan, it's not fair that you have to walk down the area or walk up to Superior to come back to Michigan. If you got your sights gone going down Michigan, you shouldn't have to divert from that. This is not safe. This is very, very scary. It takes a person 20, 30 minutes to cross traffic over there from Erie to Superior. Because Michigan is uncontrolled. Well, you know, <clears throat> getting here tonight, I almost got hit. I shouldn't have to put my life on the line just for a driver. We are all our big people. We're supposed to follow the rules of the road. We should not have to fear for our lives this way. I grew up in Milwaukee, and I moved out here because it's a lot simpler and a lot easier out here. <coughs> if I want to raise my son in a bad environment, I'll take him back down to Milwaukee. I shouldn't have to. I want something done about this. My wife read it the other night on the press that it's going to cost an obscene amount of money to put a four-way lit intersection up for, and then to do a study on it. Well, we took the lights out on semen. Let's divert that over to Michigan. You know, we could put a sensor in there where it's weight censored. Where if a car's coming up to Michigan, either going up Michigan or down Michigan, the lights would change. And that would be easier on traffic. So in effect, there would be no more accidents. There's a lot of businesses around in that area. There's a lot of elderly people. My neighbor is 96 years old. She's got dementia. How would any of you feel if that was your mother or your grandmother walked across the street and she got hit? It's a little unsettling. It is. To be able to live in a town like Sheboygan and still be fearful for your life. Enough is enough. This has got to get done. I saw two people carried away on a stretcher deal and like, while their kids are crying. Think about the trauma that's going to be brought upon those kids. You know, those kids are going to go through a lot of psycho psychological help. Oh, I saw mommy and daddy on a gurney. What's that saying to anybody else? Anybody else in this room, your life could be on the line going um, up and down 14th trying to cross Michigan. This is enough. It needs to get done. And it needs to get done soon. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. That's it. Public Next, we'll move on to Mayor's comments. I'd like to let everybody know that at our next council meeting, we'll be conducting a water utility election for a new member of their board. Uh, any the citizens who are interested in serving on the water utility will just need to have a letter of... Um, Interest sent either to uh, Council President Don Hammond or to Clerk Sue Richards. Um, in, in, July, rather in June, from the 8th to the 14th, we celebrated Bike and Walk to Work Week. And as there was a competition between the city and county employees, and we'd like to uh, just let you know that the city of Sheboygan employees won that again. Uh, this uh, competition started in 2008, and we've won every year since. So great job. Uh, Sandy Diener and uh, Dave Anderson received some prizes as a part of that, and Lori Shirky and Sandy Diener tied for the most miles walk to work. And Piggly Wiggly Midwest tracked the most miles per employee, winning the employer mileage challenge. <coughs> Uh, there's been some traffic calming measures that have been in place, and I've gotten some questions from some citizens about that. And I'd just like to read a little bit on that. There's a new project targeted at reducing motorist speeds and improving safety around 12 area Sheboygan school districts and the Sheboygan YMCA. Currently, these uh, traffic calming measures are under con uh, design with construction tentatively planned for 2014. Uh, our city crews have been putting uh, some um, pylons in the street to mimic the, uh, the traffic calming measures that are anticipated. So as people are seeing those, we want them to know what they are and, and where they could be located. It's also giving DPW a chance to see how well they can get around those for snow removal and other items. Uh, next. I'd like to call up uh, Joe Curlin. Joe is uh, 
I'm pleased to welcome Joe Curlin as the new Parks and Forestry Superintendent. He's a Mayville, North Dakota native. Joe graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Physical Education from Mayville State University. He began his professional career working as the Aquatics Manager for New Richmond, Wisconsin, and quickly moved into the role of Parks, Recreation, and Forestry Director for New Richmond. Joe started his new position on July 22nd of 13. In his spare time, Joe enjoys spending time with his family, hiking, biking, boating, and visiting new parks. Uh, I think he's looking forward to doing a little fishing in Lake Michigan and learning how to surf, I hear. And Joe, we want to welcome you to Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> say a few words, Joe? Yeah, just uh, say that it's been a month already. It's, it's gone by very quickly. And uh, New Richmond is basically... Uh, Parks and Forestry and, and Recreation, and, and uh, moving to Sheboygan, it's just on a, on a bigger scale. So I've, I've, I've so far run into most things that, uh, that uh, David has been throwing at me. Um, I just got to say, Sheboygan is just a beautiful town. Uh, my wife and I fell in love with it when I interviewed twice here. And uh, the parks are beautiful. The, the updating of the shelters, the bathrooms, um, the lakeside area. We've got a beautiful community, and I'm Proud to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. <laughs> Next, we'll move on the consent agenda. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to divide the question 211. Second. Is it moved and seconded to divide 211 out of the consent agenda? Oh, clerk, please call the roll. Eleven eyes, one abstention. Okay, under discussion. On, uh, go ahead with the motion. Uh, I'd move to approve uh, the beverage liquor or beverage operator's license for Joe Pentacle. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Under discussion on that on two eleven on that motion. Any discussion? Scott Lewandowski. No. Okay. Something else. Would the, if there's no other discussion, would the clerk please call the roll on two eleven? Eleven eyes, one abstention. Alderman Hammond. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all our rolls, accept and adopt all our C's, passed all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and second on the consent agenda. Is there any discussion on that motion? Alderman Herman. Alderman Herman, did you want did you want to speak on the consent agenda? Yes. Please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to advocate on, on Dick White's behalf. Uh, he's a credible businessman for 55 years and a law-abiding, tax-paying businessman, and he's perplexed, and a lot of other people on the south side are perplexed as to why the city has allowed him to operate all these years under these certain, a certain way and now he's being told that he has to do things a different way. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Lewandowski. I would like to have item number 2.7 voted on separately about the intersection of 14th and Michigan. Okay, is there a second to that motion? Second. Alderman Boring. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I read the <clears throat> on this issue. Sorry. Do we have a second first? Okay, we have a second. Go ahead with the discussion. Thanks, Mayor. I uh, read the minutes on this discussed over, I believe, at Public Protection and Safety at the last meeting, and I'm wondering if uh, we could get a little more information <clears throat> on what the cost of a traffic study would be over there. I forgot what the amount was. It was the thirty thousand dollars for a for a traffic study, and then it was another huge amount for putting up lights to make that a controlled intersection. I'm wondering if uh, Director Beeble would have any knowledge of that, uh, or pro perhaps the police chief. It seems like an awful steep amount to do a traffic, a traffic study over there. I believe, Chad Pelichek, you had some information at the last meeting. Whoever would like to come forward. Alderman Carlson. We 
don't actually have an estimate at this ta this stage of the game, but uh, from my previous employment, when we would be hired out to do traffic studies, they would range anywhere from 25 to as much as 50,000 based on the complexity. And then that's just to get the other piece of that that wasn't in the newspaper that I think needs to be said is this is a state highway, so we have to petition the state to accept what, we, what we're proposing and get them to agree for us to install street lights and then pay all the costs for installing the street lights. The issue that's probably going to come up is you've got lights on Erie, you've got lights on Superior, so whether this is a four-way stop or this is lights in that piece is whether, you know, every two blocks they're going to approve having another set of stop lights. So I think the bigger concern with this is petitioning the state to get them to agree that this is the right way to go. And the only way of doing that is to have somebody um, do a traffic impact analysis and study the conditions. Alderman Carlson. Thank you. Do you have anything else for... Yeah, I was just going to, if I could follow up, Mayor. Sure. Uh, what about uh, doing, uh, just doing a traffic count up there? On we got the traffic counts, and Ryan Sazma presented them at the uh, PPNS meeting. Um, don't quote me on these numbers, but it was 2,800. It was 2,800 at the 14th in Michigan, whereas down on Erie it was 21,000, and at Superior it was like 17,000 or something. What were they again at 14th in Michigan? 2,800. 2,800. Now, with that, with with those people going up 14th, or were those people trying to cross Michigan? Those are people that traveled through Michigan. that intersection. Up and down Michigan. Up and down Michigan <clears throat> direction. And I understand now with this with this accident this weekend, uh, this apparently quite a severe accident this weekend. That that's nine total incidents this year. I believe Daryl can answer that. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just want to touch on um, Friday's accident. I, I did um, receive a communication via email in regards to some false information that was being shared on Sheboygan Scanner. The event on Friday was, yes, four cars were involved. The car, um, there was a car stopped traveling southbound, turning onto Michigan. Two more cars were behind that car. The fourth car, I believe she was cited for inattentive driving. She admitted that she wasn't paying attention and rear-ended the third car, which hit the second car, which hit the first car. It had nothing to do with having a stoplight there or having one. It was, it was due to inattentive driving. And when you look at the rest of the traffic accidents that have occurred there, they would not have been avoidable by having a stoplight there. So when we look at this entire thing, we've got to look at the big picture and actually look at the facts and rely on our city engineering department and our police department who are are not advocating for putting a stoplight in there because it wouldn't actually solve the issue that we have. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Lewandowski. Yes, I just want to say that nobody does a speed limit there, and so that's why we have these rear end collisions. But I got uh, some information from the police chief, and there was an accident at, on that corner on April 2nd. There was another accident at that intersection on April 22nd. There were two separate accidents on that intersection on May 9th. There was one on June 25th. There was one on July 1st. There was one on two separate accidents on July 10th, five hours apart. There was also one accident last week, Monday afternoon, and another accident last week, Friday evening. So there have been 10 accidents at that intersection since the beginning of April. So uh, to me, it does show that something needs to be done about that intersection and somehow slowing down traffic in that er intersection. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion on the motion on uh, 2.11? David um, David? Traffic signals don't necessarily prevent accidents. So just in, in when we talk about a traffic engineering study, there's a lot of factors that go into that analysis. That's why it's expensive. All these types of ac accidents that have occurred, there's special conditions that get analyzed and looked at to determine what was the root cause of that accident. So... One of the things with that intersection, this is not the first time this has come up, when 14th Street was originally reconstructed back in, oh, 
1990, I believe that was, Michigan Avenue used to be one of the major, major intersections there when it was extended. And then when they didn't put signals in, there was a big outcry. How could we rebuild the road and not put the signals back? The, the issue is there's a lot of construction going on, a lot of traffic that's being detoured in Michigan is probably this year much more heavily traveled than in normal times. So we got to be careful on how we analyze this because of the different traffic patterns that are occurring because of detours and road construction. Nevertheless, if we want to proceed down this and study this, it, it, traffic signals are going to have to be coordinated with 14th and Erie and 14th and Superior. That means interconnection. That needs timing plans. It, it, there's a synchronized network that has to be engineered and programmed. So that's where it, it, it's not just simply as putting up a standard intersection and putting signals up that's isolated. This is part of a network and to have definitely green band traffic flow so traffic patterns move in a logical coordinated pattern that takes a lot of effort and engineering studies to go with it. That's why there's a lot of expense. It's, it's a, above and beyond, let's say, a normal intersection. So that's, that's some of the factors that we have to play into some of this decision making. Thank you for that information, David. Alderman Matichek. Uh, thank you. I was just curious about the police chief's uh, opinion on it. Chief, would you care to make any comments? <laughs> My comments are pretty much the same as what's been what's been said. We have to look at really what the cause is of all the accidents, and, and primary cause is either inattentive driving or failure to yield right away in all of the accidents. Inattentive driving, I think, is trying to get the citizens to wake up and make sure that they're paying attention, and unfortunately, it's a small group of people that, that engage in that behavior, much like crime in our city. So we have to, to deal with that, but I think David hit it right on the head that that area is really impacted by the detours and some of the other things going going on. So we have to pay attention to that and work on signage and some of those things possibly. Any other discussion? Would the clerk please call? Oh, wait a minute. Alderman Herman, please go ahead. I was at the public protection and safety meeting last Wednesday and uh, I was one of the men that advocated that there should be a light on 14th in Michigan. I know it's cost worthy, but I think it's worth the cost because you can't really put a price tag on human life. As Alderman Lewandowski mentioned, 14, uh, 10 accidents on 14th Street, that's, uh, that's ridiculous. I, I truly believe that, that there's been a danger zone there for a long time and if we don't do something with that corner, there are going to be a lot of people that lose their life. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Bourne. I would have another question for Chad. He um, uh, mentioned that being a state highway, we would have to work with the state on this. Would there be any, would there be any cost in researching whether the state would go along with this in the first place? And if they wouldn't, then I guess it wouldn't be worthwhile doing the, uh, the rest of the studies. But could we get an opinion from the state with little or no cost before we would proceed on anything else? If Chad would have an answer for that. David? Or David? He's handing it off. <laughs> <laughs> the burden's going to be on the city first. We have to prove basically that there is a traffic issue that would basically warrant a study. We might have some data. I think what's going to happen is the DOT is going to say, well, you got some detours, you got traffic patterns changing. Um, they're going to say, we need to anal analyze this intersection when it's normally operating, when you don't have Erie Avenue closed, when you don't have lane closures on 14th Street. Um, but yes, if we got to that point and there would be warrants, the state could participate. There would be an opportunity for a hazard elimination grant at which time we would have to go through that process. But no, no, no cost for an original study. 
Correct. Other than maybe time with your department or some other city department to compile some data and send it to them. Right. And, and I believe, like I mentioned, Ryan Sazmark, our city engineers, gathered some initial data on it and some like the traffic figures from what he's presented, first of yeah. all, to us. At this point, it doesn't appear to meet the warrants of a traffic signal design as by the standard of the book. So that's, that's kind of what we're going at, at this point. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Uh, the vote is to pull from consent and vote. So you're voting. What did you want to have happen to this, Alderman Lewandowski? Did you want just to vote whether to accept and accept and file? file? Is that what you're looking at? No. Okay. Just right now, I'm voting on. Just to accept and file. Okay. Eight eyes, four noes. Okay, then we're back to a consent agenda motion to approve all the other items from 2-1 through 2-18, other than the two we've just voted on. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Uh, under communications and petitions, item 3.1 through 3.3 will be referred to the respective committees. Under reports of officers, item 4.1 through 4.6 will again be re referred to the respective committees. Under reports of committee, we have number 5.1, which is an RC by salary and grievances, recommending filing a communication from Alderperson Bourne regarding the private sector Wisconsin health insurance annual average premiums for 2011 compared to the city of Sheboygan's plan. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Next is item 5.2, an RC by law and licensing, recommending that beverage operator's license 0035 be denied based on her failure to accurately reveal all convictions in our, on her application and her record of violations related to the license activity and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motions before us for under discussion. Is Shannon Batiste here this evening? She's not here. Um, we did invite her to our committee meeting on two separate occasions, and she did not show up either time. Thank you for that comment. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve ayes. Next is item 5.3, which is an RC by finance recommending a transfer of appropriations in the 2013 budget, establish revenue and appropriation for donations from Georgia Pacific and WPS for fire department equipment, and establish an appropriation for purchase and demolition of 1020 Erie Avenue. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. That motion is before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve ayes. Items uh, 5.4 through 5.9 will be referred to the respective committees. Um, and then um, matters laid over. Item 6.1, which is resolution number 41 of 1314 by Alderman Hammond, Carlson, Dassler, and Heidemann to authorize a transfer of appropriations in the 2013 budget for the purpose of establishing appropriation for wayfinding signs. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve ayes. 
Next, we'll go on to other matters. City Attorney. 7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications. That'll lie over. 7.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That will go to law and licensing. 7.3 is a resolution authorizing the Chief Administrative Officer to enter into a contract for streetlights for the Erie Avenue resurfacing project, bid number 2359-13. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. 7.4 is a resolution to transfer, authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2013 budget. That will be sent to Finance Committee. 7.5 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of appropriations in the 2013 budget. <coughs> will also be referred to Finance. 7.6 is an ordinance relating to 15-minute parking limits so as to add the parking limits on the north and south side of Orchard Drive between South 11th Place and South 12th Street. That will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. 7.7 .7 is an ordinance placing stop signs at the southwest and northeast corners of Elm Avenue and South 21st Street. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 7.8 is an ordinance placing stop signs at the southwest and northeast corners of Arizona Avenue and South 21st Street. That will also be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 7.9 is an ordinance granting Extinet Systems, Inc. its successors and signs the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of the city's right-of-way located in the area of Union Avenue and South 17th Street in the city for the purpose of installing new underground conduit structures for fiber optic cable. That will be referred to the City Planning Commission. 7.10 is a similar encroachment ordinance uh, granting Extinet Systems, Inc. its successors and assigns privilege of encroaching upon described portions of the city's right-of-way in the area of North Avenue between 19th and North 15th Street. That will be referred to the City Planning Commission. Alderman Boren. If, is, if Steve no, is done, not I, done. If Steve is done. Oh. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Please finish, City Attorney. Uh, thank you. 7.11 is another encroachment ordinance for Extinet Systems uh, for encroaching in the area of North 10th Street and Geely Avenue and crossing Bluff Avenue for the purpose of installing <laughs> underground conduit structures for fiber optic cable. City Planning Commission on that one as well. 7.12 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Wydell Vaughn requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 910 Indiana Avenue, Apartment 12. Okay, then Alderman Boren. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, before we adjourn, I just wanted to announce that a week from this Wednesday, August 28th at 6 p.m., we will be having a committee of the whole meeting, and I believe the agenda will be coming out this Thursday or Friday, so if you want to mark your calendars, thank you. Thank you for that ma mention. Alderman Hammond? Just wanted to make mention of, since Monday is Labor Day, that would be the first Monday of the, of the month. Council meeting would believe would be Tuesday night. Correct? Thank you. Thank you for that announcement. And entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Moved and second to adjourn. Please, uh, I have the clerk call the roll. Jim, you don't get <laughs> Thank you. Twelve eyes to adjourn. Thank you.